If somebody comes to me now and asks me, should I be a graphic designer? Often, now, I'm like, not a graphic designer, you should be a UX designer. Hi everyone, I am Dan Scott. I have been a designer for about 15 years now. I've seen design change completely. I am going to show you why I think UX design is the future of design and why you should do it. And I'm gonna give you five tips at the end on how to get started. So for graphic design, when I got started, there was this like open door and industry that I could go into. So I could be an average designer and just get into there and be okay. A lot of the design industry, they were using computers, but they weren't embraced yet. It was just old school designers who were at the top, at the management level, who were telling me what to do in Photoshop because they didn't have the computer skills and weren't ready to adjust to it. So if you just knew Photoshop and you are a really bad designer, you still got a job. It was enough of a demand there for people who knew how to swing in design or Quark or freehand or Illustrator. So it started to shift when people like me got bald and old and became the senior designers where I don't need somebody who knows how to use Photoshop, I can use Photoshop. So there's this new generation that are now in senior positions that don't need technology help as much. They can do the things themselves. And now there's this kind of like next stage of like the tools that I know and use and most of the industry knows are being simplified and kind of packaged up along with templates and AI. And it's giving those tools away from like the specialist to the next person up the chain, like your product manager, your marketing manager, your clients, a lot of non-designers now equipped with templates doing a lot of the lower level jobs that used to kind of keep the graphic design industry kind of full and working. So if I had to start again now, knowing what I know now and where we are in time, I'd so go into UX design. It is in demand. Every industry, doesn't matter what it is, needs a UX designer. In terms of job listings, 10 years ago, there was very little or no mention. People didn't even know the word UX. Now, there's basically no listing that doesn't include at least some knowledge of UX design. And the other nice thing is that the compensation for a UX designer compared to a graphic designer, it's not a little bit more, it's a lot more. So UX design uh, is basically designing webs and apps. That's the kind of layman's version of it. Really what it is, it's not so much designing something, okay? They call that the UI part of UI design, where you're like, I made something and here it is. That exact same thing, but testing and iterating on that is the UX part of it. Like you've done a little bit more research into your users. You've done a little bit of wireframing. You've made a small MVP version of it and tested that. That's the difference between maybe traditional design that I got taught. My design was like, all right, I, I know how to do type, I know how to do color. This is the thing you should do. That was my job, to sell it to the client. This is what you want. Now my job as a UX designer is like, you've got a problem, these are good ideas to try and solve it, let's test it and let's get to a point where we know it works. It's not me selling you, we've got data to prove it. The reason UX design is in such uh, high demand at the moment is the kind of connection to the kind of business outcomes and some of the kind of bottom line of the business. You can really change a business. My work as a graphic designer, often what success meant for me was to make sure the client was happy. That relationship was the most important thing. Hard to measure and hard to kind of work on the ROI on that. Whereas as a UX designer, the client's here and my goal now, success is, increase the sign up flow by a percent or percentages. I have such a different and more direct connection to the success of a company. When it comes to things like resource allocation, you can see why finding the world's best or the greatest UX designer you can afford has more impact on the business. Another strength of UX design over say traditional graphic design is kind of where AI and templates are really making it easier to do a lot of graphic design work with non-professional graphic designers. Whereas UX design hasn't been affected as much, it will get affected totally. There's simple stuff that'll go away. Like we do a lot of headline testing. I can't wait for that to go bloop. I don't care what the heading is, as long as it gets the right student in for subscribers. But with UX design, it, it's kind of a, a different issue. Like the thing that worked for you with the last client, you know, it's proven you've tested the out of it and it is perfect. You take it to some other client and it doesn't work. You're like, because <laughs> there's all these things that are so unique for a business that ends up being another problem to solve for me. You test the one that worked and then figure out why it's not working and you come to another solution 
that doesn't work on the next one. So there's this need for humans to make that happen. It's less of a, like, I want this picture in this composition and more, let's test it and let's get to a point where we know it works. We've got data to prove it. So in terms of transitioning into UX, if you are already a graphic designer, it is so much easier than you think. If you're sitting there going, oh, that is too hard and I'll put that off, I did the same thing. I kind of looked in it and I was like, oh, you look scary. There's all these words I don't understand. And turns out, you know, you have a large chunk of it, you're just missing the language. Things like typography, you know, hierarchy of information, composition, grid systems, all of that stuff translates beautifully to web. And even better, you'll be super excited. You'll be like, oh, I've got this new kind of format to work with. There's kind of a methodology um, to look through. So you can read up about like the Agile framework and kind of Scrum working. There are things just to go read, there's a couple of books. Um, I'll list them down in the description, the ones that were good for me at the beginning. And once you've read those, what you'll start to see, what you need to go into this as, you need to think, is this the same as this thing I know over here? Because you'll be like, ah, oh, it's got a different name but it's the same thing. And you're like, all right, I'm pretty good at that already. So figuring out the language and just transposing those things makes it so much easier. And the core stuff you already know is super helpful for UX design. I'd rather go in as a 40 year old graphic designer becoming a UX designer, even though it feels like you should be 20 something and becoming a UX designer. It's so much easier to do it the other way. All right, so that's kind of like the landscape where everything kind of sits, graphic design, UX design. The next step is like, how do you get started as a new person? I've got five tips. Uh, the first one is kind of immerse yourself in it, do a quick short dive into it. And the trick here is to figure out, do you even like it? Immerse yourself in things like short courses, meetups, in-person ones are great, but online ones work as well. And the other one is like, look at some, find some YouTubers that you like. Find out like, are these my people? Do I like this thing? Does this seem like something I want to learn? Or is something else right for me? So do that early rather than getting too far down the road. Next step, you've figured out you like it. You're like, eh, it's for me. What do I do next? It's probably just go learn the tools. The tools is probably the next easiest thing to do and will give you a good grounding in it. So uh, Figma's a main tool. There's Sketch and there's a couple other ones, but really, Figma is the only game in town. So go learn Figma. I've got a course, go do my essentials course. The cool thing about it is whether it's mine or someone else's, even though you're learning the tools, you'll learn the process as well. That's what I've tried to do is we build something together, you get an idea of like the language and that'll be really helpful kind of to kind of see the things that you've learned, the theory in context, making something. That would be my next step. If you want to do something a bit more intense, you'd go to something more like a six month or 12 month boot camp where it's really focused um, and kind of intentional. Make sure you talk to somebody who's done one and it's easy to do on social media. Find a Facebook group, jump into it and say, has anybody done this one? Anybody like it? And people will be brutally honest because some of them are brilliant and some of them seem brilliant, but are super lame. All right, tip three is to build a portfolio. A portfolio piece for a UX designer is kind of key to that first few jobs. After a while, reputation is fine, but to get started, 100% need a portfolio. So ideally your portfolio should be made up of three individual projects, things that are separate from different clients to give an example of different things you've worked on. Hopefully when you're doing your kind of learning, you've picked a course, like my Figma course has a project that is unique that at the end you can use that for your portfolio. Also design challenges are really good. We do them at Bring Your Laptop. They're just really good to get given a brief and a timeline and some guidance and you can use those for your portfolio as well. The other thing is to maybe do some spec jobs. So look around the industry you either want to be in or the, the jobs you're likely to get. Find something and redesign it for them without asking. And don't do Nike, everyone does Nike. What I'm looking for as an employer, I want to see, see you overcome challenges. A bad design and making it better. Nike is beautiful, with beautiful type, with beautiful images. You can move it around. You're not really solving anybody's problems. That's what I wanna see. I wanna see ugly things become beautiful things. Things that don't work become things that do work. Your portfolio has to do two things. It has to look good. And it's okay to, let's say you, you've done a job, it's an actual job, and there's some um, parts that you wanna strip out to make it look great for your portfolio, that's okay. Okay, get it all dribble-esque, okay? Make it look nice. But the real part of it is, showing you're working. When I'm looking to hire a UX designer, I'm looking for a thought process. What you did, what your involvement was, problems you ran into, I'm looking for that. You're gonna be my problem solver. I wanna see that in your portfolio. Tip number four is 
say yes to everything. There is a time for you to get paid right and be treated right. At the beginning, take anything. Ask around, ask your grandpas, uncles, friends, brother. He's got a job, he's gonna pay you in beers, do it. Because what you need is, you need that experience to show the next level of your career, I've done stuff, this is how I did it. Because some of the portfolio stuff to get started is great, but real clients are great. And just take anything you can get. Internships are great. Often you need that portfolio first, but that can be the next step is an internship. You need to be in a position to be able to not get paid or not get paid very well, but look for them. They are more competitive, so you need that first portfolio piece. But if I got to do anything, an internship would be amazing. All right, the last tip is you need to jump ship. Uh, you're gonna learn lots in that first job. Unfortunately, you'll be boxed in the doesn't really know what they're doing box and won't be trusted with the trickier jobs that you really wanna get your teeth into. And you'll be stuck at a certain pay level. If you go in at the entry level, you're not gonna be able to double your income. You get a little bit more, a little bit more, but you're in this bad place. What you need to do is basically jump ship. You need to go to another place where you can kind of shrug off the, I don't know what I'm doing, green ears kind of thing. Is that a thing, green ears? Anyway, it's a way better way to jump in terms of pay rates and you will be trusted a lot more when they don't know about your past up. It's the same for all industries, but it's really common in UX design. All right, so if you take anything away from this video is that graphic design's not dead. The traditional way is, but it's fractured into these other pieces. And one of those pieces is UX design. And I love this part of it because what I got into graphic design for was art plus problem solving. And whilst traditional stuff did it, UX design gives me so much more. I love it, and if I was getting started again, that is the direction I'd head. All right, so if you enjoyed this video and you like wanna go a little bit further with UX design or Figma, check out bringyourlaptop.com. There'll be a link in the description. Uh, if you've got a question and you're like, oh, I'm in this situation, should UX design be for me? Let me know in the comments. That is it. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.